we're going to get started. Absolutely. Jeff. <laughs> How's everybody doing? So I have had the pleasure this last week of um, entertaining Michael and his lovely bride uh, at our offices. And I've gotten a chance to, to know him. And uh, you know, obviously, anybody you know, over the age of 10 knows this man's name. He's a kind man. He's a generous man. And I think the reason he was put on the planet was to help us. That's, it's, it's not about books. It's not about, he, he's, this is his song. And I want you to really hear it. Uh, I also have to tell you something kind of funny. So he's done thousands and thousands of interviews. And so I was joking with him yesterday. I said, now, I, I could go rogue. I know I have some questions written here, but I could go rogue. He says, Krilly, I learned a long time ago. <laughs> it doesn't matter what I'm asked. I'm going to answer the question I want to be asked. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the question. It's the answer. Right? <laughs> so, it is, I just want to make sure we're, uh, you're hearing him. Am I, do I have um, your mic? Is this, is this mic? No, that's it's, okay. yours. Is this right? Okay, so. So when you answer the questions, you'll just have the mic. Okay, all right. Let me just make sure that this is on. Sorry. I'm new at this. I've I'm, I'm never done. Uh, <laughs> so you got it. Okay. All right. Mic check. Mic check, mic check. Are we good? Yes. But did you introduce Fred Parrott? Oh, I did not introduce. I got so excited. That's Fred. Right. All right. Is this on? No. no. Well, you oh. turn it on. You're being recorded, but every time you ask. Okay. So we'll have to. Do, us, we're going to do a single mic, guys. Are you ready? Okay. So Fred Parrish, amazing gentleman. He came to me for maybe seven months ago and just said, hey Jeff, have you ever heard of Michael E. Gerber? I said, heard of Michael E. Gerber? Of course. And he says, we're co-writing a book and uh, I want to talk to you about promotions. So uh, Fred came into our company's life uh, about six months ago and I really enjoyed the experience of working with Fred. He's a, a generous man. He's uh, so giving and so wise. Uh, I'll tell you a joke on Fred. It's not a joke, it's a true story. Um, we get clients on the news all the time, and that's what we do. We, we get clients on, on the radio and television all over the country, and we do these Fox tours where a guest will have to do like nine or ten back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back radio interviews across the country. And the interviews begin at six. So uh, it's six o'clock, and I get a call from Fox News, and they say, Krilly, your guest is not answering the phone, and your guest has 10 interviews scheduled. And I thought to myself, who in the world can I get to fill in for my guest? And because of Fred's knowledge of industries and businesses, he can pretty much talk about all things business. I said, I'm praying that Fred is up. So I call him, and he answers, and he's chipper and wide awake. And I said, hey, Fred, could you fill in for like one interview until my guest uh, wakes up? He says, sure, what's the topic? <laughs> until my and guest wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> he says, sure, what's the topic? I said, I, said, I, I, I can't even remember. Let me send it to you, and uh, your first interview is in five minutes, and you might want to scan the article first. <laughs> Okay, so it's a true story, right? So, so uh, I, he, does, he does the first one, and then my guest finally wakes up and calls in and says, okay, I'm ready, I'm sorry I missed the first one, I'm ready to do the rest. And I told Fox out of New York, I said, okay, the, the original guest is, is up and ready to go now. And they said, no, we've got Fred scheduled for all of them. <laughs> and so I said, Fred, I'm going to owe you one, but you got to clear your schedule for the next four hours. And he, he's a champ. He's a champ. Fox calls and asks for him by name now. Okay, so are you ready for the first prepared question? All right, we're going we're gonna to start with Michael, and then we'll, we'll pass the mic to, to Fred. you got to understand, <laughs> we, gave, we gave Jeff four questions um, yesterday. And all he's been saying to me all <laughs> all day is, what if I don't ask you the questions you gave me? <laughs> but and it's constantly, constantly, constantly doing that. Like he's gonna give us a, a low ball. He's gonna ask me a question I've never heard before. And I was saying to him, I have heard every question anybody has ever asked. So ask me anything. Okay, so, and this is the question that they wrote for me. Why is this the greatest book of all time? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just reading what you wrote, guys. <laughs> All right, Fred, Fred or uh, Michael, Michael, uh, what, what inspired this book? What was the question? <laughs> I'm just going to leave you out there. Right? <laughs> what inspired me to write this book um, was the obvious need to touch that very, very critical role of a chief financial officer. Um, the conversation about what a chief financial officer does and to begin to understand that every single person who owns and operates a small company, an emerging company, a fast growing company, absolutely must play not only the role of a chief executive officer, but the role of a chief financial officer. And nobody had truly written about it from the perspective, the emith perspective that we brought to bear. And so I was thrilled to have the opportunity to do that. And that's what we've done. Fred, same question. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, in my experience, and uh, I've been doing this almost 40 years, most small businesses are too small to have a true CFO. They may have the bookkeeper they call their CFO because they think the bank is going to be happy about that. Uh, just let you know, the bank sees through that, so that doesn't work. But by default, in those companies that do not have a true CFO, that owner, manager, CEO is that CFO. And I've watched literally hundreds and hundreds of companies go through, okay, sorry, go through just unbelievably difficult cash issues, uh, you know, painful to the point people are passing out in the hallway and, you know, you, you are getting phone calls from uh, the IRS and from the attorneys from uh, different uh, other companies who are threatening you and, and uh, in fact, I got a call one time from a, uh, a vendor that we owed uh, $1,500 to at one point and I was accused of killing her husband because we didn't pay the bill. I'm not kidding. That's real. And so I have watched this over and over and over again uh, play out. And so teaching small business owners how to understand what a CFO is and what they do and how important that role is, is absolutely critical. And so that is really why I was interested in doing that. And I'm going to yep, say please. one last thing about that, which will not be the last thing about that. <laughs> but it's to think of it as a system. So you understand what Ray Kroc did was to go to work on McDonald's to perfect the system called McDonald's, the operating system called McDonald's, that would be able to be scaled, replicated tens of thousands of times. Understand how unique that is. Nobody I have ever met in a small business, and literally nobody I have ever met in a small business, understood this perspective, this point of view. They never thought that, in fact, Ray Kroc had created the perfect operating template for growing any company on the planet, whether you decided you're going to franchise it or not. The minute you think about it systemically, you suddenly have a completely different relationship with what you do. So think of the C CFO as a system. Think of the CEO as a system. Think of the CTO as a system. Think of the COO as a system. And see that you can actually create that system for scaling that system so that you can grow that at will. That's the genius of McDonald's. Now, I keep on saying McDonald's, but understand that's the genius of every scalable enterprise. From a company of one to a company of 1,000, again and again and again, and every single one of you, every single one of you, understanding that Ray Kroc started at 52 freaking years old, 
started McDonald's at 52 years of age, you can't tell me you're too old. I'm freaking 82. You can't tell me you're too old. I love it. All right, I'm going to ask this next question. It's written for me, but I'm going to ask it in the, in the form of a story because I think I, people relate to stories. So let's suppose I open up, I'm, I'm good at baking donuts, and I start baking donuts and I open up a little shop. And I'm getting up at 2 in the morning to get to the bakery to start the, you know, the, the vats of grease to make my donuts. Uh, at what point do I need to read your book to be successful? I'm just a guy making donuts. Before you start making donuts, <laughs> that's when. Now understand, before you start making donuts, you'll not necessarily appreciate what I'm saying in my book. But once you start making donuts, once you become a donut, once you can't determine the difference between being a donut and making a donut, at that point in time, you ultimately come to, there's got to be a better way to do this. There's got to be a better way to do this. What in the hell am I doing waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning to make donuts and keeping making donuts and cleaning up after donuts and doing everything else related to donuts until I go to sleep at 9 o'clock at night. 2 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock at night. Does that ring true for anybody here? Has anybody ever done 2 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock at night because nobody else could do it as well as you could do it? I see owners doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 beating their brains out, not understanding they can delegate this to somebody who has mastered the system. But until you create the system, there's nothing to master. That's when they should read it. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So let me ask the same question to Fred. So that small business owner making donuts, what is he not thinking about? He's, he's not thinking about hiring people. He's not thinking about there might be somebody else I could get to wake up at 2 in the morning. He's not thinking about promotions. What, what is he not thinking about? Well, I mean, like Michael says, if you are <clears throat> just doing it, doing it, doing it, you've got your head down, you're not able to anticipate what's happening. So let, let's think about what's going on in the economy right now. The, the economy is pretty good, right? Everyone, I think, can agree to that, at least for now. But what does that mean? Labor rates are going to start going up. Everybody's starting to see that. It's the tightest labor market in 50 years. Oil prices were up, now they're going back down. Now OPEC is talking about cutting back on production, so they're going to go up again. You have interest rates going up. Those three items in the economy will affect everybody in this room. It'll affect every company in this room. And unless you understand how it affects your company, even that donut maker, Somewhere down the road, you could be running toward a wall and you don't see it coming because you've got your head down doing it, doing it, doing it. You've got to look up. And accounting information is not going to make your company great. It is something that is a necessary thing that we do. We've got to file tax returns. We've got to report to the bank. But that is scorekeeping, that is looking backwards. That's like driving down the highway at 70 miles an hour looking out your back window. Now think about, about that for one second. 70 miles an hour turned around looking out your back window. Something bad is going to happen somewhere. You're never going to see it coming. You've got to change your perspective. You've got to be able to predict what's going to happen. And so that donut maker has got to, at some point, look up because they are going to hire some people, they're going to be buying supplies, they're going to be paying rent, and all of those things are changing all the time. And if you're only paying attention to making donuts, you're not paying attention to those things out there that are going to kill you. Let me ask you a question. How many of you own your own business? Please raise your hands. Right? Okay. You are your CFO. How many of you have an accountant? Please raise your hands. Right. He is not your CFO. How many of you have a bookkeeper? 
Please raise your hands. She, he is not your CFO. So effectively then, you're leading the financial future of your company. Your accountant is reporting to you. Your bookkeeper is reporting to your accountant. But effectively, to the degree you fail to create a financial management system, you have failed to do the most fundamental things that are critical to be able to go to work on your company to create the chief operating system that's critical to the operation of your company because you don't understand the financial reality of it. The financial reality of it is key. I was sitting next to Scott Walker, and Scott Walker addressed himself. I asked him what kind of business you're in. He says, I'm in every business. And essentially, he's owned nine different companies, started up nine different companies. I don't even know Scott Walker. He's sitting right there. Scott, would you raise your hand? Everybody knows you here. But Scott understands, even before I talk to Scott Walker, what I'm talking about. He has to understand it because he couldn't have started up nine, eight, seven, however many different companies he started up without understanding this systemic perspective that's critical to every single one of you. Every single company in Dallas, every single one of them, from the smallest, from a company of one to a company of 1,000, absolutely must understand this and they don't. So hear me, it's so, so critical. And it's so critical that we've created a university for small business owners. It's called Radical U. Radical U, the only entrepreneurial development school on the planet online, and every single one of you get to go to Radical U to truly begin to develop through the eightfold path the systems that are absolutely essential to the operation of your company to liberate you from doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 busy. I don't care if you're one person or if you got 50 people, understand this is for everyone. And that's why it's so important and why we're here. Now obviously, we're technicians right now doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. We're speaking to you. We're right here doing it. But understand, if that's all it was, this would be a foolhardy mission. We have to be able to delegate this, delegate this, delegate this, so you can tell that story, so you can tell this story, so you can tell this story, so you can tell this story, so everybody here in this room can tell this story in exactly the same way we're attempting to tell it to you. That's wonderful. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Fred a question and then I want to have the, the audience ask questions. So Fred, you have a great story about a uh, business that you helped one time that was leaking profits. Would you tell that story? Yeah, sure. And I, I think this is... Um... I want you to understand, none of these questions are the ones we gave him. <laughs> Not one. <laughs> Yeah, and I think the company he's referring to is a small plumbing company up in the Northeast. And when we had first started working with them, uh, we analyzed what was happening, and they were literally out of business within the next six months. <clears throat> and they had no idea it was coming. They came to us and said, we have a profit on our P&L, but we can't pay all of our bills. We, we have problems with the IRS, we have problems with the state on sales tax, and we have a big pile of debt. What's going on? We can't figure out what's happened. Now, the, the plumber was a very good plumber. He was running the operation. They had four people. They were doing about a million one a year, making about 35000 in profit a year. So let's round that off to 3000 And that was after... Um, paying themselves a pretty good salary, actually. So they were doing well personally, just the company was a mess. And so we started talking a little bit, and in about two minutes of conversation, figured out they were making about $3,000 a month in profit, but they were paying out 13000 in everything else. So do the math. The problem was 
they could not connect those dots. And I'm going to tell you, that sounds simple, but that is not unique. That is something that happens every day all over the country, really all over the world, because people are not able to see what is going on around them. Because, again, they're doing it, doing it, doing it. They're the technician out doing the plumbing work, managing other plumbers doing plumbing work. And they can't see what is happening beyond that. And so in working with them, and I'm going to tell you just very quickly, rather than start cutting a lot of things, what we advise them to do is add 50% more technicians. They had four, we said hire two. That's going to take cash. It's going to take three or four months for them to get trained up to speed where they can generate enough revenue to uh, get a return on that. They're going to have to buy a new truck for each one, new inventory, new equipment. So they're going to, they're going to spend a big pile of money and they're saying, oh, wait a minute, we can't pay our bills. You can't see what's going on around you. So we hired one in July. Three months later, we hired another one. By the end of the year, in six months, Instead of being out of business, they had increased their revenue by 40% and their cash flow by 500%. Wow. And so we went from them going out of business to uh, two years later being completely out of debt and three years, five, uh, four years later, 500,000 in the bank. It's the idea of knowing what is happening around you and being able to plan. It's that system that Michael talks about all the time. If I do these things, what kind of results am I going to get? If I do other things, I'm going to get different results. Which is the better path? It might cost you a little bit of money up front, but this is the better path long term. You don't know that unless you do the proper level of analysis and planning. And so Michael's the right brain. I'm the left brain. It is about the ability to understand that if you set a target, then you evaluate how you're performing against that target, and then you adjust according to what that evaluation tells you, and you start over again. It's a very simple cycle, but you have to follow that cycle, and you have to have the system in place to make it work. And if I might add a little story. And this is a story about a company that you all probably know. Have you heard of 1-800-GOT-JUNK? How many of you have heard of that company? Raise your hands. Um, Brian Scudamore um, actually was just interviewed in one of our webinars. Uh, the founder of 1-800-GOT-JUNK um, started it um, when he was going to college. He was driving through literally a McDonald's drive through and saw a guy with an old pickup truck with a sign, we pick up junk. And he said, I could do that. So he wanted to create enough money to pay for his college education. So he bought an old pickup truck for 700 bucks and ran an ad um, when they used to run ads before social media um, and got a his first call and then a second call and then a third call. So he's paying for his college education, picking up junk. He grew that company to half a million with 11 people. And he came to the realization he was having a horrible time. He wasn't enjoying himself. He realized he wasn't a leader. So he decided to shut the business down, go away, to a cabin on the ocean for three days and redesign his company. And what he did, Bryant told me, during those three days is to create his first true vision for what his company was going to become. And he wrote down all the things that were going to happen over the next five years. Absolutely earmark these five things that were, or these things that were going to happen over the next five years. One of those things was to be on Oprah. Now you got to understand, he's a junk man. And he's saying, I'm going to be on Oprah. So this is a religious conviction, he told me. Now what else he did on those three days, he told me. He read the E-Myth Revisited twice. 
He doesn't read. He isn't interested in reading. But he read the E-Myth Revisited twice. The first time he read it convinced him he had to read it again, and he read it again, and then he went back to start his company all over again. I call it from a pickup truck to a 747. 1-800-GOT-JUNK today is a $370 million a year company, which has become the prototype for other home service companies. And he started four new companies, taking them to over 400 million in doing identically the same thing, just like McDonald's did. So hear me, I have a dream, I have a vision, I have a purpose, I have a mission. Write that down. I have a dream, I have a vision, I have a purpose, I have a mission. And once you understand a dream, a vision, a purpose, a mission, the dreamer, the thinker, the storyteller, the leader is exactly what every entrepreneur is and must be. And the minute you understand that, you can understand there's a system for literally doing that for creating your dream, for creating your vision, for creating your purpose, for creating your mission, and every single one of you must do that. Every single one of you must do that. That is, if you truly wish to go beyond doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. And if you don't wish to go beyond doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, there's no help for you. None. Hear me. Zero. If you're not compelled to go beyond being the chief technician, cook, and bottle washer in what you're doing, you're lost. You're lost forever. It will never change. No matter how brilliant your consultant promises to be, no matter br how brilliant your coach promises to be, no matter how brilliant the people you hire to save your butt promise to be, it will never, ever, ever get any better, ever. And that's a promise. I guarantee it. Wow. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> these, these guys are incredible. So I would like to take some questions. Who has the first question? Go ahead. Uh, Brad, uh, other than being on Oprah, uh, how does a small business owner you gotta his own repeat the question. CFO, yeah. Yeah. Uh, get a handle on what if scenarios, what's coming down the road, how do you, how might he or she do that? Fred, repeat the question. Yeah, so uh, he, he's asking how a business owner can get a handle on the changing conditions, what if type scenario planning. Uh, it, it really, again, this is a a technical part of what we talk about, but you, you operate in a certain way today, correct? Everyone has an idea about how that is. Whether you have modeled that or not is a question. No, it's not. Well, it's not a question. I can guarantee you they haven't. Okay, yeah. you need to model that so Michael will feel better. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody gonna do that later today? But what you have to do is establish a baseline, find out where you are today, find out how you're operating today and how changing conditions are going to impact that future cash stream. Because really, to be honest with you, nothing else matters in your business other than cash flow. Everybody in this room knows if you're out of cash, you're out of business. So that is the number one thing that you have to look at. Then you have to take into account if, again, if I do a certain set of things or make certain decisions, how is that going to impact either my revenue and or my expense, and how does that affect the bottom line, which then I have to turn into cash? And the timing of when I turn that into cash is what's critical. Because if you are generating a profit and you do not collect on that revenue, you actually would have been better off had you never done that in the first place. Because you've spent a lot of money generating whatever profit margin you have. So it, you have to develop that baseline and then look at 
specific projects or actions or decisions that you're looking to take and see how that impacts what that structure, that operating structure is. And what Fred didn't say, but what Fred has done is to create a system through which you can literally begin to predict what indeed you're going to do and what it's going to create for you. I call it the cash master. You can call it whatever you want to call it. Fred calls it something completely other than that. But it's a software system you can plug into your company for only $49 a month that will literally do what a great CFO does. And by doing that, he enables every single one of you to become your own chief financial officer. It's incredible. Wow, that's wonderful. Another question. Bill, I know you have one. Uh, yeah, ask one of the questions that they, that wanted, was on the, that I they just, wanted you to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a gentleman over there raised oh. his hand. Oh. Terry, you got one? Yeah, um, Fred, on your software system, before a company implements that, is there a uh, setup period that you help them with in order to get it set up and do the foundation? Yeah, and it, it is, the um, yeah, the question is, is there a setup process uh, associated with our software, which we call the Profit Beacon. Michael hates that name. <laughs> we pay a lot of money for that name. I, but yeah, I can tell you it is, it's extremely complicated and it's very difficult to do. I've gone from zero setting up a brand new user, brand new company, loading the data and generating a two year P&L and cash flow forecast in eight minutes. Very easy, very fast. All of the sophisticated financial analysis and extrapolation that we, we do in a forecasting scenario is all done in the software. All you have to do is answer a few questions. It is truly an automated CFO. But you see, if you don't or fail to automate the way you do business, automate the way you do business. This is how we make a Big Mac. This is how we make a Big Mac. This is how we make, you understand, I, I don't want to bore you to death. This is the way we make a big, so now Murray can do it, Jerry can do it, Jimmy can do it, Judy can do it, Sam can do it, tens upon tens upon billions can do it. Once you know that, then you understand the relationship between the financial project projection, the financial management system, which isn't managing the past, but managing the present and the future, which you can do every single day. You have a measure against which you can see it, and you can see it from down the street. So imagine this. I'm inviting every single one of you to move out of your business down the street. The minute you realize you're moving out of your business down the street, you suddenly realize you're playing a completely new game. That's what Scott Walker had to do. Now, I don't know Scott. He just sat down next to me. He had to do it. He had to do it because he wasn't in it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. He was inventing it to be done. Your company is your most important product because ultimately you're going to sell the turkey. And the question is, what's it going to be worth? To the degree it's scalable, you have increased the value of your company exponentially. To the degree it isn't, you're selling a job. Stupid. You got it? I've got a question. Could you convince Jerry Jones to just own the Cowboys instead of <laughs> run the Cowboys? <laughs> you want to take that? <laughs> All right, we got, a, we got a real question? <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, guys. Um, so the question yeah. is, what are some checks and balances for the, for the system being put in place and kept in place? What are, what are some uh, systems, that, uh, checks and balances that you can put in place to make sure that everything's getting done? Um, first of all, let's take you where you are. 
is first of all understand there are three essential systems in your company. There's lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment. So there are three essential systems in your franchise prototype. Lead generation, how you generate prospective customers. Lead conversion, how you convert them into active customers. And client fulfillment, how you convert those active customers into clients. Those are the three essential systems of your company. Turnkeying those three essential systems is critical. And the way in which you measure it at the very beginning, since you're a small company, I presume, you're a small company. Okay, how many people do you have? Uh, a lot of contractors. I can't hear you. A lot of contractors, but just a few people. Contractors. Yeah. So you have independent contractors that report to you? Yes. Got it. Those are your people. Yeah. You're really screwed. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, because none of those know how to do it. So they're making promises to you on your behalf, to your clients, your customers, and you're gonna have to get, expect them to keep it. Well, they're your franchisees, in quotes. You understand? So you have to build an independent contractor development system so that you are gonna license independent contractors to do what it is you're promising they're gonna do. Big job, big job. That's the first thing you need to do. I think we have time for one more question. Yes, sir. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. First of all, I want to introduce him. Um, would you please introduce yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Brad Korn, a uh, real estate agent in Kansas City. I heard you guys were having a meeting today, so I drove seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and Brad Korn is the co-author of the E-Myth Real Estate Agent. And a brilliant, brilliant E-Myth fanatic. Um, Brad has a story that's a powerful, powerful story. Brad applied the e-myth to his real estate agency business um, to the point where he could delegate 90% of what he did to people who have absolutely no experience in his business. Now think about that, no experience in his business. Brad's wife became ill. She was in the hospital for how long, Brad? She was in a coma for five months. Yep, until she passed. Brad went and stayed with her in the hospital and left his business in the hands of a virtual kid who continued to do exactly what Brad was capable of doing without him. Now hear that, nobody can do that. He did that, and that's the story he tells in the Emith Real Estate Agent. It's a stunning thing, a stunning thing. So I just wanted to introduce you, Brad. Well, so the reason I'm asking the question is because I was sitting in this seat 20 years ago when I read the Emith book, and so I know where you guys are sitting right now. So thank goodness 52, Ray Kroc, because I'm 51, it means I got one more year to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> um, where do successful in our business or we think we're successful in our business, we're doing really well, living a great lifestyle, how do we take it to the $500 million company? Where do we start? Step one. Okay, so let me, he, he's terrible because obviously I'm not here to sell you this, but I'm here to tell you this. The very first thing every single one of you want to do is to enroll in Radical U. So go to RadicalU.com. This is the only school of its kind that takes you through what we call the Eightfold Path. And I'll describe the Eightfold Path to you very briefly. The first step is the dream. I said you have to have a dream. Uh, Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. How many of you listen to Martin Luther King say, I have a dream? Any of you, all of you, 
go online and listen to Martin Luther King say, I have a dream. And if that doesn't inspire the creator within you, the entrepreneur within you, hear me, don't do anything that I'm saying from now on. Because <laughs> if you can't truly experience the power of a dream, you're not an entrepreneur and you will never be one. But understand, the dream I'm talking about is not a personal dream. It's an impersonal dream. Martin Luther King's dream wasn't about Martin Luther King. It wasn't about, I want to work fewer hours. It wasn't about, I want to work less hard. It wasn't about that at all. It was about, I want to change the world for my people. You get to change the world for your people. So a dream is the first step. A vision is the second step. A purpose is the third step. And a mission is the fourth step. That's the fundamental criteria by which you begin to build any company on the planet. Now understand whether Steve Jobs followed this principle or not, I know he did when he started Apple. However he called it, whatever he thought of it, this is exactly what he did. Every single one of you. This is what Scott did, and I don't even know Scott. But this is what Scott did. I have a dream, I have a vision, I have a purpose, I have a mission. My dream is to transform the state of small business worldwide. My vision is to invent the McDonald's of small business consulting. My purpose is that every single small business owner can be as successful as a McDonald's franchisee by utilizing our system. And my mission is to invent the business development system that's applicable to every single company on the planet. That's what started us in 1977. That's what enabled us to do the work we did. The next four steps are key. The job, the practice, the business, the enterprise. The job is your client fulfillment system. The practice is your client acquisition system plus your client fulfillment system, creates your franchise prototype. Lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment, your franchise prototype. Your business is nothing other than your practice times seven. Get this, it's like the district at McDonald's, up to seven stores in a district. What do you need? You need a turnkey management system to grow an enterprise. What's an enterprise? It's simply a business times seven plus a turnkey leadership system. We've turnkeyed the process through which you get to grow. The only way to grow a company, the only way to grow a company, and it's available to every single one of you for $479.40 a year, a year for Radical You. Don't ask me any questions about it. Just go freaking do it. You understand? <laughs> A round of applause for these two brilliant gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael and Perfect. Wow. As we reset the room here, Julie and her husband, Michael, the nature of excellence. It's a phenomenal book. Beautiful I, book. I was first given this book, as many of you have heard, by Colleen Barrett when she retired as the COO of Southwest Airlines. It's the book she gave to her board of directors, and it holds a special place in my heart, so enjoy it. Thank you. Second, these are some new things that have just come out, but it's a discount. It's $500 in travel. So enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. And this is a bribe. Luzdalia, <laughs> this is a bribe. Dinner for two at McGuire's, a fabulous restaurant, but they're only in Dallas, so you'll have to stick around and use it here. And Fred, Thank one you. for you Thank as you. well. And not to be outdone, you've seen it, a little wine today. How about some more? Ray, where are you? Come up here. This is, for, this is an award-winning dessert wine. This is for you, Michael, but engraved to you. Oh, from thank Success you. Success North Dallas, uh, Queens Winery. Get a picture of Ray with these two, wherever our family is. Somebody take a picture. 
Excellent. And Fred, for you. And thank you, gentlemen. Did we do good? Yeah. Did we? I think we did great. Let, let me say one last thing. Let me say one, let me say one last thing. Um, because this gift, essentially from Southwest Airlines, Southwest Airlines is the McDonald's of airlines. Just get it. This is how we do it here. This is how we do it here. This is, you can't do that. You can't do that. You want to bet? They did, and they do. Anybody can. And there's a reason that we have success North Dallas, because my mentor, Herb Kelleher, one day in 1988, I was sitting in his office, and he said, Wallace, when you figure out why I should do business with you, come back. Now get out and figure it out. And that's where, that's where and how success North Dallas so, big deal. Just do it. <laughs> Jeff Grilly, for you, a custom-made shirt at Edward Bob and Clothiers, just to say thank you for putting this together. Without you coming to me on this, it wouldn't have happened. Wow. Okay, we're going to run through some stuff. Very easy.